He's, of course, an award-winning scientist recognized by the Asian Scientist Awards, along with four others. But this morning, we're not going to talk about that. I thought, well, first of all, let's say good morning to you, Rohan Petyagoda. Good morning, Faraz. Nice to, nice to be with you this morning. Thank you very much. Now then, you know, we had Aragalea and... Uh, Great dissatisfaction. Our economy is contracted. The latest report says nearly almost 12%. We don't have any queues, but then maybe people don't need as much because the economy is contracted. 62% of the working population are daily wage. They have challenges of their own. And it all appears that our mainly old fossil politicians are uh, don't seem they seem to have lost the ear uh, on the ground you know they don't know the heartbeat of the people so whilst most people are yearning for elections and a change a change for the better i thought i'd ask you where can our youth who will make up the bulk of our population a uh, voting population where can we look for inspiration for solid leadership to take Sri Lanka and make Sri Lanka a full use of Sri Lanka's potential and where the opportunities will be so much that the brain drain will actually turn into a brain return. I think the problem here for us is that we shouldn't look at just what the youth want because everybody wants jobs, we want prosperity, we want lower prices. There's a list of desiderata that we can trot out about what we want, what we hope for, and what we hope politicians will give us. I think what instead I would encourage young people especially to do is to think carefully about the source of our problem. We have a national problem. Our predicament stems from just one place, a massive budget deficit. That has been going on for the last three generations. Every generation since 1952 has borrowed in order to feed itself. And when you borrow, it's future generations who pay back your debts. So our grandparents and our parents were able to lavish money on infrastructure projects, on improving roads, on improving telecommunications, giving us education, giving us health, and so on. Every year, borrowing money in order to fund this. And now someone's gone knocking on the door saying, it's time to pay up. And then we don't have money to pay up, which is the source of our problem. So will we have the courage to say, no, we're not going to borrow anymore? at least not borrow substantially. Well, if you don't borrow, then the next plan, the next option, plan B, is to print. Now we've got the last year spent without any borrowing, except local borrowing, of course, the government's been borrowing locally, but it had to do that in order to stem inflation. But government borrowing, I think, will go down as the year progresses. And then uh, not borrowing from overseas sources, which is because they don't trust us to pay back anymore. So I think we've got a new reality emerge that we're going to have to earn the money we spent and not just borrow it. And if politicians can be forced, every political party, every manifest can be forced to say, what are your spending pledges and where are you going to find the money for spending? We'll have a much more realistic political firmament in this country without these glib promises being made by politicians as to what they're going to give. The question is, where is the government going to get from? And we can see now that the amounts of money we spend, if you think about it, we had this controversial pay tax hike last year. Mm. But the total revenue to government from all the pay tax in the country is just about enough to meet the losses of Sri Lankan airlines. Just that one loss center of government needs the whole country's pay taxes. So government 